Okay. So this is Team Pier. Uh, Say hey. Kellen Wenzel, how you doing? Hello. We're at Gunny's. I'm behind the counter with Brian Hood. Coyote. Peace, love, dope. We are checking out guns for review in the Nothing Fancy project. So just kind of looking at the rack, getting a couple, talking to Kelly, you said? Kellen. Kellen, okay. Yes, sir. Cool. So I gave him this gun, by the way, and I said, hey, would you buy this gun? And tell the viewers what it is there, it's a, Kellen. It's a DDM V11. It's real nice, lightweight, great key mod rail, full length, which is good, because when I index, I'm way out in the front, typically. Uh, stock, it's all right, but. Hold on, go back to stock. What do you not like about the stock? Well, I like how it's rubberized. Uh, you like do like that? I like how it's pretty solid, yeah. It kind of feels good up against my cheek, okay? I mean, if I was shooting something real strong, I'm gonna rip my face hairs out and be pissed off, but this is fine. Uh, actually, it's pretty similar to the CTR, I like it, but I am tending to go with the stocks that come down and curve down, I can't remember, I think Mission Force Tactical. MFT, it, yeah. Yeah, it gets rid of all this, it's just simple, makes it a little simple. smaller, simple, better. Okay. So that's a stock and the overall gun you said you're way out there. What do you mean? Like you hold it way far yeah, out? Yeah, I index way out in the front. I like my light as far out to the front as I can get it. Okay. And I like the smaller lights like the like the surefire and the stream lights, little pistol lights with a with a toggle on the back of it and I just use my thumb. Okay. And I just you know, I'm activating it out here and that way I don't have any shadow from my barrel or anything like that. What do you think of this handguard right here? Well, I think it's pretty light. I like the fact that it's a key mod. Um, you like key mod better than M-Lock then? You know, there's, I, I have an M-Lock on my Tabor and I really enjoy that, but you can find more accessories that are key mod that I've found. Mm -hmm. So it works better, you have more options. I like key mod myself. Yeah. I can go with either one, but I'm kind of gravitating towards key mod. Dick mod, you mean? What do you like, Brian? M-Lock. Do you? How come? Uh, Lighter? Not necessarily lighter. I depends on the rail. Some mm -hmm. are lighter, some aren't. Okay. But just the mounting options, it's proven to be a little bit stronger than key mod. Okay. And I don't like Costco shelving on my guns. Costco shelving. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's slotted, that's yep. the, what is analogous to Costco shelving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good input. By the way, he's manager of the store now. Come by, say hi to Brian. Uh, Wyatt works super late, so he doesn't come in until later. Back to the gun. Yeah. I think this is an awesome AR-15. Yeah. I think DD does amazing job. They're expensive, but yeah. they deliver. I've had nothing but good experience yeah. in shooting DDs. A uh, little bit of burble on a 308, but we might revisit that. But for 1,500 bucks, they've got as uh, M and P two on sale right now for 530 bucks, and you got any any four, you know, front and rail you want over there for under 100 bucks, mm -hmm. and then you can. You know, it just has a standard AT flash hider, and if you listen to this, this thing's no smoother than the $530 gun. And I'm a lefty, so I'm not down with ARs very much anyway because, you know, where's my mag release? Where's my bolt, where's my bolt release? It's different it for you. It doesn't work for me. That's why I go for the Tabor. Everything's center line. You know, it's right down the middle. It's easy. You make some good points. And it's shorter, and it's got all the accuracy this does from practical shooting when you're running. You know, from so. practical shooting, the, yeah, the Tavora, my experience, will be about a two MOA, maybe right. one and a half MOA shooter. I think I got pretty close to MOA with some loads. It just depends. Yeah. I love the Tavora, man. Dude, it's, right, it's right in there. What are you going to do? Measure this grouping from a from a bench and find a half inch better for, you know, all this money when you can spend 530 bucks on an M and P and dial it in just the way you want and have money left over for a ton of ammo. Well, you're speaking my language, man. I'm a right. value guy. So you're talking about the MMP15 Sport, correct? Yeah. yeah, the one they've got on sale right now for 500 for a third of the price. So come on down. Today only, this week only. Yeah, like your door camera case. <laughs> I don't lose it that way. It's like a child's pencil case repurposed. Seriously. <laughs> come on down buy your MMP15 Sport. How much is it, Brian? Oh, dude, 539? That's such an awesome gun. Giving them away. And I'm not just saying this. Any AR-15 right review I do in competitive options, almost always I'll mission the M&P 15 Sport. Sometimes a Ruger AR-556. It's a good benchmark for the money. It's totally is. To beat it. It's just not 5R rifled anymore, correct? Yep. And they never went back to that. twist and they got rid of the 5R rifling, which was disappointing. Mine is. Ha, 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 ha. I got an early one. But you don't have a port assist. 
I don't care. You don't have a dust cover. You can't operate. Still don't care. You can't operate. See, this is sarcasm from Brian, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the interweb says, hey, without those features, you're oh, toast. Oh, yeah. You totally might as well toast. just surrender. Mm -hmm. Give yeah, it up. This is the best dust cover I've ever seen. Listen to that. Listen to this. It's it's so smooth. It's smoother than the bolt. So back to the question, would you buy that? I think no, the answer is no. I wouldn't, wouldn't buy it at all. Ever. You'd get your value MMP15. Yeah. Configure it as you want. That's it. And even if you wanted to do a barrel upgrade, you can get the nicest shill and barrel or whatever you want and put it in there and you still have you know, probably 500 bucks left over to get your Trijicon MRO to put on top of it and be done for less than under that exactly how you want. Correct. Uh, so let me, let's go back to AR-15 actually. So if I'm doing a tabletop review and, a, and an AR-15 shoots two inches at 100 yards, you as a viewer are happy with that or do you go, I'm not too happy with that? Dude, that's fine. You know, you're, what if it's a fifteen hundred dollar? What if it's this gun and it shoots two inches at hundred yards? Well, I mean, I would prefer it to be tighter than that for fifteen hundred bucks. I'd expect it to have the barrel. What do I say in my reviews? Let's see if you've picked up on the philosophy. Do, 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 do. You do watch the videos, right? Yeah, yeah. As far as accuracy goes, I would say that inch and a half. You'd be happy with an inch and a half from a fifteen hundred dollar gun. Um, AI. I personally would not no. from a 15. If a guy's going to be charging me $1,600, that better shoot him away. Yeah. That's what I say in the reviews. Especially when I can get an M&P 15 Sport shooting MOA all day long. That's what I say. I've got a great <clears throat> Rock River that shoots three quarter. Here, let's do that's it. what I'm saying. Yeah. Bench. And that's a sub 1000 AR 15, right? Yeah, it is. Sub the Ruger AR 556 shot three quarter MOA with good ammo. So my point is, if you're going to charge this, it better deliver the accuracy standard. I hear what you're saying, saying, oh, it doesn't have to, you know, it deliver practical ac accuracy, right? That's what you said. Sure. Like, who cares if I'm, if, as long as it's center of mass, I'm good. I'm down with that. But we're talking like value, value and quality levels, kind of a second cool thing. And to me, and actually it's beyond second cool because if I reach out to 600 meters with this sucker, with 77s, and I'm shooting two, two MOA, you can do the math. Now I'm off paper, I'm off steel. So, and that to me, that's like the outer range of an AR-15 for me, 600 meters. I'm not, so if that shoots two MOA, I'm not happy with it. I can tell you DD doesn't, it shoots really good. They have really good barrels. DD makes all their own barrels, I believe, don't they, Brian? They have two hammer forging machines. They started off with one and they bought a second. There you go, 4150? Chromoly vanadium steel. So top quality barrel. And they used to do salt bath nitride on a lot of their strength to weight barrels, but then they found out that doing chrome lining, that they could get the same accuracy out of chrome line barrels as they could salt bath nitride. And so uh, going forth, now everything's going to be chrome lined. So you get the barrel life with the accuracy. How many DD AR 15s do you sell here versus other premium brands? Well, we probably sell more Daniels than any other premium brand. Yeah. Which other one would you recommend to a customer coming in if they're looking to spend that much money? FN. Um, yeah. On their, on their higher end, their TAC-2, mm -hmm. their DMR-2s. You know, they use, uh, you know, it's their barrels, but they're using um, mega wedge lock handguards and stuff like that. So you're getting, you're getting a good system as well. FN's another company that has a ton of military experience and Plus it shows. It's just fun to say their FN name. I mean, <laughs> FN sell name. FN ARs, you know, <laughs> FN guns all day long. So, <laughs> totally. So, Tavor's your go-to. Yeah, it's short and it's got. But you said you're the out there holding way forward, right? Yeah, typically because I like to have my my light towards the front of the gun. But yeah. I can accomplish the same thing on a Tavor. I can get it towards the front of the gun. You know, I'm just indexing here. This is the total. This is the total length of the firearm, and that's all right. And then you put the extended handguard on your. On You've got a little extended bullet. handguard on there because the stock handguard doesn't give you any room. You have no functionality with it to, to mount anything to. Your only mount's on the opposite side of the gun that your thumb's on, and then that sucks because even if you have uh, a light with a tape switch, the the cables are never long enough, and you can't go across the top. I never you got use your that. charging yeah. handle. You got to go around the bottom, or if you have an M lock handguard, you can go through the M lock holes with your with your wires if you want to. But, so I did that initially and then I just got away from it and just started activating it directly by the toggles. Works fantastic. That's what I do. Completely happy with it. I, I go KISS principle. Less wires and crap yeah. I have on my gun, the happier I am. Yeah. Less crap I have out front, the happier I am. 
Right. It's a light, that's about it. Maybe a VG, maybe. I usually don't run a bipod anymore. Unless it's a special application that I need it. I like your vertical grip for indexing, plus a taver. You try and pick that thing up in the dark next to your bed, and the only thing really to grab is your charging handle or the front part of your grip, the grip guard, or you've got uh, the, just the tip of the barrel and that's it. So a vertical grip does two great things for you. It gives you something to grab it by. It's a good handle, and it's a good place to index it. So You still it, playing it with my pouch overall. over there? <laughs> yeah. Keep going. I'm listening. Actually, I am. That's that's pretty much it. You know, good What year did you buy your Tavor? Am I saying it right? He says Tavor. I say Tavor. I don't know. It's either way. Potato, potato. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the Hebrews are. It us. doesn't matter. Yeah. We know what we're talking about. Yeah. What, what year did you buy it? Um, 12? I bought my, whatever year the, the X95 came out, I bought mine right before I found out about the X95. And at first I had buyer's remorse because I wish I had an X95. Then I saw the reviews on the X95 and how bad the accuracy is. And you know, then I became a lot more, a lot more happy about it. Yeah, I was right in line with that. I was pretty disappointed with X95. Yeah. If you're going to bring a micro Tavor over, you're going to have to make it class three. Right. And if you get a Tavor and you put a can on the front of it, it's still shorter than this guy. Tours are awesome. Yeah, it works for. I have lefty. nothing to say about a regular Tavor. Yeah, they're freaking awesome. Yeah. Combat proven. It's an infantry weapon, just adapted slightly for the civilian market. Well, have you ever disassembled? It's it? a little bit heavy. That's all I can say. Have you ever disassembled one? Yeah, it's super easy. Well, it, it is easy to get the bolt carrier group out, but I mean, when you take it apart, completely strip it down, you've got a hundred freaking little pieces, and some of them are real, real thin carbon reinforced plastic rings and. I stuff. haven't look, stripped it down to look, that level. Look like toilet paper tubes and stuff in there made out of carbon reinforced plastic and stuff. And you're thinking, dude, is this thing really going to last? You know, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of thin. Would you strip it down to that level for just for the heck I, of it? I took my gun apart first thing when I bought it. <laughs> I I'm laughing because Doodle talks about this all the time. You just want to check it out. You got to know everything about it from day one. And, uh, and so I did. And I started thinking, this is this really going to be as durable in the long run as, as I want it to be? How many rounds do you have through yours? About 1,500 so That's far. That's a pretty good that. count. Yeah. Pretty good count. So when you go shoot, well, are you shooting at the range? You go out in the desert or what? Well, uh, I just moved here from North Carolina. And so there's not a lot of open spaces yeah. to go shoot out there. So you're basically out of range. And so you kind of feel like you're wasting time after a little bit because all you it is a waste of time, really. You're, you're stationary, if you're training. you can't do much. There's not a lot you can do, but I'm but I'm from here, and so previously I did a lot of long-range shooting out in the desert, and that's what I'm doing now that I just moved back out here. It's a whole world of difference, isn't it, yeah. when you get out there and you can run your own courses. Are you shooting steel? I am. What, range, what yardage did you set your steel up for? Well, most recently, last weekend, I took my son out. We went out past Five Mile Pass, and we were shooting about 600 yards. Cool. With a Tavor? No, no, I have a Rock River AR that's really nice. I got a good scope on there, and that's about stretching it for that, shooting 77 grain, and then I got a yeah, 308. That's what I said. Oh, yeah. wait, you said you hated ARs because you're a lefty. So you do have well, one. Well, this is before the whole, you know, Tabor, you know, bullpup, center line, ambidextrous thing really started to happen. Otherwise, you're looking at like a Norgon ambi catch, and you're still kind of screwed up on your bolt carrier release. So it's kind of nice to have your Norgon here and there, but I like the Tabor better on the center line. Okay. You know, you just pop your thumb back as you're reaching for your new mag and jam the new one in. Yeah, the Ergos are pretty excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Different ways you can hold it to war and all that. I love it. It's just yeah. a little bit heavy. But I still have ours. We're not selling them. No. Why? Why would you? It's great. It's just freaking awesome. It's a standard to measure in the bullpup world still. Yeah. And there's some other good bullpups and other ones I think are kind of falling flat. Like the Desert Tech. What's up with that? They hyped it two years ago and then Yeah. I don't Brian would know. He's gone. I don't like the Steyr log. I don't like yeah, I don't most like the, of them. Tabor is pretty much the only one I like, and I've got a, I've got a um, Geisley trigger in there. Mm -hmm. Worth the money. It's expensive, but yeah. it really transforms that gun. Yeah, it does. I have a uh, Timney in mine. Okay. So the same concept. It's yeah. a much better trigger. And there's all types of information online how you can remove a spring and do your own trigger job on a Tavor. Most guys are doing that, I think. And still not affect reliability, apparently. Yeah, I, I started out doing that, <laughs> yeah. and then I decided to upgrade and I'm happy I did. It has a lot better yeah. feel too, a lot better reset and everything else that just removing that spring doesn't do for you. So the R D B is actually pretty good. I didn't mind that. I you know, track record is gonna take a while to to establish with the Keltec, the RFB. I shot it and it was is 
been pretty good. The other one was good, but I think we had a couple stoppages, and I don't know. If I'm remembering right, so many guns, I don't, I'd have to go back to my records. But the RDB survival is insane. Yeah. The, did you see my video on that one? It's a super light one. Yeah. Uh, it's, I watched all your bullpup videos. Yeah. Make my decision. Those are cool. It wasn't super accurate, but it has a real thin barrel. It's really not meant for that. It's, it's a survival rifle. It really yeah. is. One thing about the caver, it's not a good gun to share because I'm a lefty. And you hand it to somebody else and it's put in brass right at uh, the yeah, right chin. Because you yeah, change your ejection on yeah, it? Yeah, you can't share. Hey, Brian, what's up with the Desert Tech bullpup? MDR? Yeah. It sucks. Told you Brian would know. Talk to the audience. Uh, so over promise, didn't it? Over promise. They kept, I mean, it's the classical two weeks. Oh, in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two years of that. Yeah. They fired their head engineer on it. And then the other engineer that they fired, uh, or that the engineer that they fired, one of his buddies left Desert Tech because the company tries to control it too much. So, so it's flatlined. It, it'll come out, but it won't be its full glory of what it could be. Hmm, kind of like the Masada? Yeah. Kind of like that. And there was so much YouTube hype on the MDR. Mm -hmm. I remember that in videos. Oh, dude, this is so awesome. It's going to be the best. Not necessarily. Uh, bull pups that you would fight with. Is it right now? Probably just the standard Tavor, like what we were talking about. There you go. That's it. That's 100%. Nice. It's That's awesome. So sad. That's kind of where I'm at, too. That's How about the FN? FNS 2000? Or FN 2000? You mean that funny looking boat looking thing? <laughs> I'm not a fan, but I'm just asking. No. I'm, <clears throat> yeah. That gun never sold well. No. Nope. Does anyone ever. Good for Splinter Cell. You know? Yeah. What's that? The video game. Oh. Uh, Sam Fisher. Splinter Cell. That's where the FN2000 got that, popular, right? Uh, that and the 5.7. I mean, that game like helped popularize, popularize those guns big time. And you cannot overplay the importance of video games and movies and selling guns. Oh, you can't. Huge. Yep. Huge. And it's this generation, I mean, most of these kids, that's how they know guns. It's because they play with them in video games and they, you know, and then they come into the gun stores. It's say, a good hey. thing, really. Yeah. It's, it's say, a good hey, thing because we have a new generation coming up learning guns and buying guns. Yep. For sure. You and I aren't going to be here forever. We need that generation protecting our gun rights. It's just scary. It is. Yeah. It is. Well, there's some good ones. The kids that serve in Afghanistan are awesome. They're pretty studly. Why did you come here to buy, by the way? You're here for a reason. Yeah, I did. I got a, a, a range finder, six hour, <clears throat> kilo 2000, and yeah. uh, it, it sucks. When you hit the button to get your range, it only works about 30% of the time. And I'm not talking, if you hit the button three times, it'll work once. I'm talking, you try and get it to work three times, and out of that, it'll only work one time. So That's pretty bad. What are you going to do with it? Just eBay it? No, I'm uh, exchanging it for <coughs> oh, you a bought replacement. It here. Yep. And if uh, if this next one works, I'll be happy with it because I like the way it's set up. It's got a higher magnification than the other range finders in the price range, about 400 bucks. I've used Leicas for years, and they're mm -hmm. awesome. The CRF yeah, Leica series. Is a lot of money compared to a 6 Get what you pay for, man. You bought a Tavor. That's not a cheap gun. Ooh, yeah, that's true. How's that for circling back around to value? By the time you <laughs> dial in your Tavor, you're But I'm going to buy me a $99 range finder. <laughs> 400, 400. Pay the money. Yeah. You'll have it forever. By the time you dial in your Tavor, you're looking at three grand by the time you put an optic on it. It's pretty standard for a tap yeah. carving. Yeah. Pretty standard for something high end. Right. Yeah. This is what it is, but you're happy with it. But a Extremely happy. So, oh, by the way, I was going to ask you this. So that's your go-to defensive gun in your house? Yeah, absolutely. Do you live out in property or are you in a neighborhood? Uh, I'm in a neighborhood right you now. You shooting frangible or what? No. Have you done the math on the penetration of that stuff? Yeah, I've done the math. I use 195, XM 193, and uh, it's, I mean, it's going to have less penetration than steel core, and I don't think I'm going to get... Not that... I'm not saying 5.56 is like the ultimate penetrator. It hits yeah, a couple I'm things, not gonna but be going through. it's a lot more than a 9 mil. That's true. <laughs> I'll say that. That's true. I prefer Speaking to have a from rifle. experience, shooting through car doors and windows. I prefer to have five five six The 5.56 does quite well, especially 193. Yeah, yeah, I'd it freaking to have rocks. A rifle caliber than a you know pistol caliber carbine. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, yeah, works a little bit. Do better, you have kids? I, I do. I Wife? Agree. Yep. Are they? Uh, you train your kids to shoot? Yeah, I, my son shoots me all the time. In fact, I'll show you a video that you're not putting on here. Okay. Uh, after afterwards, I think you'll <laughs> like it. 
Uh, does the wife shoot? She does. She supports the whole uh, Second Amendment thing with yeah, you guys? Yeah, she's all in. I'm a Glock guy. She's sick, and so we have you know, a little rivalry going there. Speaking of Glocks, let's do a gear check right now. Well, these guys all have. Oh, yeah, I'm on my way to gym. So. Oh, here come the excuses, dude. I don't have anything. No, I said off camera. I went. He I is my car on the way to work out. So, so active shooter happens, and you're on your way to the gym. Barbells. <laughs> Well, what are you packing, Hood? Let's see if I can find a you, Hold on, let me guess. You've got a Smith & Wesson product. A Glock. It's a Glock 19. And it's modified. Bingo! Let's see it. Sorry, Kellen. That's fine. We gotta, we gotta see a gun from somebody. Yeah, somebody's got it. coming from you. Oh, that looks awesome. Talk to us, Brian. What you got? Glock 19 Gen 4. Um, yeah. My slide work is all done by ATI in Michigan, so he does my serrations. Um, done it on a bunch of other guns too. He's the one who cuts my red dots for all my guns. Right. Uh, Zev Pro Magwell, Apex, um, their Glock Trigger, Surefire um, XC1 Flashlight, 10 8 Performance, Fire Optic Front, U Notch Rear with 10 8 Performance base plates, Tango Down, Mag Release, and Slide Catch. Holy crap, and does then, that thing come with batteries too that yeah. is tricked and then i hold glocks really high like you can see scars from there from holding glocks really high yeah his scars on his hand are from shooting it's a good thing he's the general manager <laughs> and so <laughs> what i do is i take the factory yeah. back straps on there and i cut them off and i just what? give myself a Check beaver tail out. so that way i can get a beaver tail so i get you know just you know and then i do all my own stippling on there can I, I tell you, I'm more impressed with this coyote. gun than, than that Smith & Wesson. How's that? Yeah, thanks. Dude, the Smith & Wesson was cool, but this this is over the top. Question, though. It's functional, practical, but it's not over the top. How much money do you have into this? So I do my 25. own... 25. Including oh. shipping no. to and from. Oh, no. no. <laughs> like, I do my own stippling. I do my own Cerico work. So... Okay. You know, you can't really count that Just stuff. Just give me in. a ballpark price, what you got in it. Maybe a thousand bucks? Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, do you shoot that better than a regular Glock, though? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Brian's a good shooter. You've seen him on camera before. He's a really good shooter. So that will cut your times down on that. It's for me mostly the serrations are just helping for press checks and loading the gun. But the biggest things for me, like I got fairly big hands. And so when I grab and hold on to. A factory gun like the finger grooves hit my fingers right in the middle yeah. so for me that's uncomfortable yeah um, I'm not flipping off the camera but I did break my knuckle so you can see it's at an angle there what so happened? that's why I give myself I don't know <laughs> so I give myself undercuts on all my Five Glocks minutes. yeah so that way I can get higher up behind it so there's it's all you know functional reasons why I do this stuff uh, to my Glocks there's some second cool in there too yeah, there it makes is. you happy right when mm, you it pull does. it out and check it out yeah cool but, I mean the you know, those things are there because it helps me get a better hold on the gun, which in turn helps me shoot better. And the you Apex know? Trigger? Apex Trigger, I like flat triggers. You know, Glock 19s, they have to ship with the uh, serrated triggers on there to meet importation points. And so, yeah, you could throw on a, you know, a 17 trigger inside of there. That's flat, but if I'm going to do that, I might as well give myself a little bit flatter trigger because all my ARs that I shoot, I'll have Geisley flat triggers. My bolt guns have... Timney flat triggers in them. So I'm just keeping the same trigger profile on all my guns. That way my finger, you know, it's just the same on every single gun. Fair enough. So, yeah, that's why I do the Apex, but I, I keep all stock parts in there. I don't run uh, a minus connector or anything in there. I just polish what's in there because I don't mind the pull weight. I just make it a little bit smoother. What uh, gun is that, by the way? This is the new Summer Special Glock. Because it's got Ford uh, yep. serrations, which so is abnormal. The Summer Special Glock, they're doing Ford serrations on there. They moved the roll marks back. They did an extended mag release and slide catch from the factory. And then they're using steel sights on there now. Wow, check that out. So it's only about 20 bucks more. Than totally worth it. it. Yeah. For me, the big, the big thing is the front serrations. The Glock factory serrations have something left to be desired. I mean, that's why I get enhanced serrations done on mine. But... Uh, you know, for that, for people who don't want to send off and get work done, that's awesome. Um, extended, you know, slide catch. Some people have a problem with that because they ride it with their thumb. 
Uh, so, I, every Glock I have has an extended slide catch yeah. on it. So, I, and I've never accidentally hit it yeah. within my grip. Some people just, you know, they just haven't trained with it properly yet, and so they ride and it. And some and people it. hate using a slide catch. It's yep. only slingshot only, mm -hmm. so it just depends. Yep. But, you know, there's just, it's kind of a cool option that yeah. Glock is finally the, starting to catch up. They're not super behind the curve anymore. Like, hey, let's start giving people what they want. Now, if we could only get Gen 5s without... Right. Groups, I just I think we'd be cooking. Right. I just did a tabletop on a pistol and I kind of took it to Glock for being so out of date. Granted, the product's pretty good, but dude, just to compete, what you're saying, let's have a pretty, let's have a tricked out Glock. Ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. <clears throat> Ambi features in it. Different siding options. Change the grip up, dude. It'd sell like crazy. Yep. They're way behind the power curve with this because the pistol market is extremely competitive. You don't have a 320 X-Tac, do you? <clears throat> and chicks hate Glocks because your grip is so long. You know, the, the back, the palm swell, too big. Too big and for my her. wife, that's the main reason why she doesn't like Glocks. She likes everything about my gun better than hers, except for the fact that her sick fits in her hand. What do you carry when and if you're carrying? Glock 19. 19? Always. Inside the waistband? Appendix. Yeah, cool. Does that waistband. dig into you when you drive your car? No, it doesn't. It You're fine. I'm fine. Yeah. I mean, my left testicle's in danger, but otherwise, <laughs> you know, right? So we always have to accept some risk, yeah, right? Yeah, there's always risk. What's your workout today, by the way? Shoulders, arms and shoulders. So tell the viewers real quick, what are you lifting? What are you doing super quick? Uh, well, I'm probably going to... Just iron, steel? Yeah, I don't really like machines. Yeah. So I'll start out with, with dumbbells, doing everything, and then I'll move over to some cable machines, and then I'd probably be done then. Are you doing it at home, or are you going to a gym? Uh, gym. Do you find you get a better workout going to a gym? Yeah, it's, it's more motivation. Once you're there, there's no distractions, except for, you know, you can, you can focus better. Cool, how about you, Brian? What's your workout today? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> yeah. Me, I'm gonna do a little bit of lifting and I'll hit the treadmill if my knee can take it, in case you're wondering. Oh, my gear check today, super quick. Look at that, match set today. That's awesome. And I can't take the gun out, but it's a G43 iPhone 6. And then, dude, you always need to walk around with one of these. These are excellent. Sheffield utility knife. Yeah. O-Lite, and then the man pack that has all the things in it that you've seen before. Oh, and the watch is like a Wegner Latitude, Attitude, I think it's called. There you go, in case you're wondering. Pretty standard crap. You don't have a watch on, dude. No. Do you not wear a watch? A lot of guys I don't. Got a gym. I don't like I don't like jewelry at all. I don't like wearing anything. Yeah. Not even a gun. <laughs> not right Kidding. Now. Kidding. Parting thoughts. Anything on the gun market uh, that you want to tell the world right now? Don't wait for HPA by suppressors. It's not going to happen. Ooh, good advice. So, Nothing good's happening. <laughs> Obamacare's not getting repealed. Taxes is, aren't going to get down. Uh, Obamacare's not going anywhere. It's dead. It's dead. <laughs> Thanks, John McCain. Asshole. Stop. Nice. Yeah. Well said, Kellen. <laughs> Kellen, I like the honesty. Yep. The honesty. <clears throat> well, once people got a taste of any entitlement, it's here to stay. Yep. Uh, and once it passed, pe people are entitled. Never mind, it's non constitutional. I'm entitled. Yeah. Hey, where's money come from? Don't care as long as I'm not paying for it. How's gun sales, by the way? Mm, summertime's always a little bit slower, but they're still good. You know? What are guys buying? I'm hearing concealed carry pistols, concealed not carry. much out. Yeah, uh, concealed carry is huge right now. We're starting to get into hunting season. Okay. So, you know, we're starting to sell more rifles and stuff like that, but still, it's concealed carry by far is what we're selling the most of. Handguns, handguns, handguns. Cool. So if you come to Gunny's, uh, check in with Brian Hood or uh, Wyatt if he's here. Say hi, buy your guns from them and buy your whatever from because they're supporting us like right now i'm checking out that gun another gun oh that tmp sent me uh i'll tell you right now it's a cz p10c that's why i'm here i'm picking it up so thank you viewer awesome what's his name by the way crack that envelope he wrote a little letter in there too so this is a process that we can do once in a while joshua aka the schofield project <laughs> the schofield project what an awesome dude. I mean, he said he was going to do it, and within a week, I had it. That's how you do things. So I'm going to go out to the desert, start testing on the P10. I'm sure I'm going to love it. I'll tell you right now, I'm going to. Uh, there's a lot of hype about the gun, and, it, and I'm really going to concentrate on 
You know, uh, I'm not one of these guys just because it's new. Oh my gosh, it's the best thing ever. Well, compare it against some other guns to about the same price level. In the tabletop, probably. That's it, signing off. Okay, uh, and by the way, if frowns start flying right here in the store, just jump behind Brian and I, we got you. Yeah, yeah, once you got a loaded <laughs> AR magazine for a gun that actually has sights on it, then I'll, I'll help out. Signing off. Dude. Oh, dude, check it. There is one. We're ready to rock. Now we got to change the location. We've shown the world.